Okay, we're going to have a quick look at particles today in Blender. Uh, so let's just add a sphere here. And we'll add a UV sphere. And what I'll do is I'll shrink it down a little bit. And then this front view here, I'm going to hold down shift and hit zero on my number pad and moves the camera to there. Then I'm going to hit one to bring us back into the front view here. So now you can see that the uh, the, if I render that out, you can see the sphere there in the middle of the screen. Uh, let's grab it and move it down here. Well, actually, before we do that, uh, we'll go into the particle uh, emitter. So we have the sphere selected. We'll go here to our object window, which is F7, and we'll go over here to our particle buttons, and we'll add a new. And then we'll just go right here and click Bake. And so now it's rendering particles for frame 1 through 250. And you'll notice, if I zoom in on these, and I start going through the key frames, or just through the frames, you'll see these dots. Those are the particles. And if we hit F12, we can render it here. And you'll see the particles show up. And by default, it removes the object. Uh, the emitter in this is what it's called. So that's how we make a particle. Now what we can do here is we can free the bake, which undoes the, uh, the particles. And now we can grab the sphere, put it down here. If we go to frame one, we can set a key frame there. And then we'll go to frame, well, I'll go to 250 just to show you something here. And I'll move it over here. I'll hit I to set another key frame. So this is the movement of our sphere. Well, that's actually it backwards. But if we hit bake, you'll see it's baking and it created particles. But you'll notice that halfway across, they kind of stop. Why is that? And we'll also look at what they look like. So we'll go here and we'll hit render, F12. And you can see it kind of made like a cloud behind it. And it's kind of doing it in a zigzag pattern. Um, so we can go over here and we can start changing options, but a lot of them, if we try to move them, it's going to give us a little message, boop. And it's saying that we must free it from bake before we make any changes. So we do that. Now the reason that the particle stopped halfway is because here in the emitter basic window, um, we show that we're creating particles from frame 1 to frame 100 and the lifespan of them is 50. That's 50 frames. So it's generating them from 1 to 100 and then they'll live for each particle that's created it lives 50 frames so we'll have particles on the screen till frame 150 if we were to bake that out. So if we wanted to we can change this to 50 and we'll change, we'll leave, we'll, no, we'll move that to 150. So now the particles won't start admitting until frame 50. They'll admit till frame 150, but they'll live to frame 200 because they live for 50 frames. So let's bake that out real quick. And there you go. If we go back to the first frame, as we move up, you'll see it's not emitting anything until we get to frame 50. It's creating them, gets to frame 150, it stops admitting them, but some live until frame 200. Okay. Another thing, we'll free that bake. We'll come over here and we'll go random. Now, if we bake it again, you'll notice it doesn't create that zigzag pattern. It's creating more of a random pattern, which in most cases is probably more what you're looking for. We're still getting kind of a clumpy cloud here, and that's because of the number of particles we're creating. Uh, we're creating a thousand uh, particles in that from frame 50 to frame 150. So you have to keep in mind uh, this number in comparison to this because a thousand frames over or I'm sorry a thousand emitters over I'm sorry a thousand particles over a thousand frames isn't a whole lot but a thousand over a hundred frames is let's uh, oh we have to free the bake first and we'll change this to 200 now we'll bake it again and we'll have a look at what we're getting oh now we're getting more of a individual particle look. Now we can also change the look of the particle by going to our materials and we can hit uh, add material and we can give it a color. Now if we render it out you'll see the particles have the color that we're giving that object, the emitter. Uh, another thing we can change is we can go halo here which changes the look of the particle slightly but what really changes it when you choose halo if you go to shaders you have a lot of options over here, like flare. If we were to render it out now, you see it's a little bit puffier looking. Uh, we can do rings and render that out. And it does just what it says, a bunch of little rings, which is a cool little look to it. 
uh, and lines is a good one, kind of gives it a starry effect. So now we're, we're looking at how we can change the look of the particles and the color of the particles. Let's go back into our particle window, F7, particle buttons, and we're going to free that bake. Other options over here we're going to look at um, down here at the bottom is the global effects and we've got uh, the X, Y, and Z axis. So now if we turn the Z axis up, we'll say to about 43 and we'll bake, you'll see whoop, the particles are shooting up because we're telling them to go up on the Z axis and we put it at a pretty high number 43 there. So you'll see they're starting at the emitter and moving up pretty fast there. Let's free that bake and turn this number down to maybe 10 and let's bake it and see how it looks. Still going up pretty fast there. You can render that out, see how it looks. Uh, you can also, if you wanted the particles to go down, obviously you would put that, free the bake, put that into a negative number and then bake it out. So if you want the particles to like pour out of something. Also, you got the x-axis, so if I turn this up, they should be shooting out to the right, but they're still going to be going down some, because we have the negative in the z-axis there. There we go. And if you want to do y-axis, free the bake, we'll turn that up. And now they'll be coming forward as well, or actually back. If you want it to come forward, it'll go in a negative number. So if we look in the top view here and go through our frames, you can see them as they move. So that's our first look at uh, particles, uh, and I'm going to do another little video using the skills I just taught you to, to superimpose some particles over a video. So get ready for my next tutorial. Hope you're enjoying this. Filmsbychris.com, that's Chris with a K. The link is in the description. Feel free to visit. There's plenty of videos and tutorials on all open source media, software, and more.